So there's some awesome news coming up for everybody who's looking forward to farming legendaries in the new DLC, especially for those who are about to reach the maximum level of 57. And in this video, I'm going to go over some of the best methods that you can use in order to fully take advantage of that, take the most amount of legendaries in the shortest amount of time, and also get some of the newly added skins with Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC number 2. But to top it all off, we also have a new mini event from Gearbox, and you might have realized that most of the vending machines out there now have a bunch of legendary items so this is an event that is going to last up until April 2nd and all of the vending machines in Borderlands are now going to spawn at least one legendary item of course appropriate to your current level so if you're 57 yes you're going to be able to get some 57 loot out there also we have gearbox delivering in-game mail with some of the skins from the previous event in case you missed any of these and you to access them simply access your socials tab in the pause menu and you should see all of the emails being delivered over there so some pretty exciting stuff let's jump into it and as always a thumbs up on this video would be super awesome first things first you're going to have to have dlc number two installed for your game in order to actually take advantage of today's guide and i also recommend pretty much finishing the entire main quest line of the dlc as this also opens up a number of very awesome farming spots and a number of bosses that can drop some pretty awesome loot so make sure you do that before actually proceeding with this video now as far as the skins go there's a bunch of new headpieces that have been added for all of the four main characters as well as a number of skins that you can apply to them and for the most part I don't think there's any achievement that you need to follow in order to unlock this all you have to do is basically kill everything that you lay your eyes upon in the new DLC because all of these are for the most part random world drops so go ahead do some of the bosses in the game kill a lot of enemies and eventually you're going to get all of the skins in this game I've seen a number of people actually asking where these drop from well it's all random and by the time you finish the main storyline chances are that you're probably going to have at least a few of these already unlocked anyway as you progress through the DLC you might encounter some of these red chests with the tentacle theme as well as some of these newly added floating portals which again act very similar to that but both of these can definitely drop legendaries and they are fully resettable which means you can save reload and they will refill your stack for you to open again and test your luck but there's a few locations that I'm going to mention which are really easy to uh, access as well as to reset and I'm gonna start things off with two very awesome floating portals that you can get early on the first one is in curse haven this is going to be east of the cemetery waypoint somewhere in the middle of this staircase right here and you're going to find the portal right next to this wall over there and yes this is going to spawn either the weapons so you will have a chance to get legendary right off the bat when you open it but it also has a chance to spawn a loot scritari which kind of acts like a loot tank so this one is even better if it spawns because it has a rather high chance to actually drop a legendary just make sure you're not shooting it before it exits the portal because you might have your legendary be stuck behind the actual wall so just be careful with that one the second one is going to be in the archives map this is going to be on the eastern wall right next to the eldritch statue behind a hidden wall so this is something that the game points you towards anyway as you progress through the story it's going to be behind this uh, bookshelf and you're going to have to activate this skull in order to reveal it but it's going to be sitting over there it's going to uh, reveal its loot and again has a chance at dropping some really awesome legendaries the next one is going to be Red Chest, and this is going to be very close to Critchie's spawn point in Curse Haven again. But uh, in order to access it, you're going to have to go in the back of the area behind this wooden wall over here, and you will have to crouch under it, and then you will reach this uh, small hidden room where you can find the actual Red Chest. And again, this is fully resettable. But in the same area, you're going to probably want to also hunt for Critchie, a target of opportunity, and also a a challenge over here that drops clairvoyance assault rifle so if you didn't get a chance to get this one this is a pretty damn good assault rifle the way this works is pretty simple it pretty much sticks exploding bombs when you're hitting crit points such as for example like heads and when these explode they can deal a ton of damage and also kind of um, deal aoe damage to enemies nearby so the, the damage can definitely stack quickly but i tested this around it seems to be dealing a ton of damage 
both with the base bullets as well as with the actual explosives and I also tested against Gravord with some really high success so definitely recommending to getting the Clairvoyance Assault Rifle. Now if you're the type of person who enjoys having multiple legendary drops from one single source I think that the best source in the new DLC is going to be a mock, the mini boss that you can find again in Curse Haven. So in order to access this one you will have to take his bounty in the lodge in case you're not seeing him spawn in the first place and uh, yeah once you do that it's going to lead you right next to the lantern's hook waypoint on the platform right here so you will even see him spawning from the red slash orange portal in case you don't see that portal spawning this means that the target is not going to spawn at all so you will have to reset and reload your game but uh, otherwise he seems to be one of the most common spawns out of the rare spawns in the new DLC and he also has the highest amount of chances to drop multiple legendaries as a matter of fact on average he seems to be dropping anywhere between one to four even five legendaries at the same time so yeah definitely go ahead do it um, he also drops the unseen threat sniper rifle which is his dedicated drop but he also has a fairly good chance at dropping the other world drops that have been added with the new DLC. Moving on to number 3, this brings us to another very good method of actually getting a ton of legendaries and this is by farming the bosses called Tom and Xam. This is um, a very fast and easy farm, even faster than the previous one and there's two bosses that spawn in the Heart's Desire map right next to the second waypoint. Now the reason you might want to include both of these on your farming list is because they also drop the Soul Render Assault Rifle which is arguably one of the best weapons in the new DLC. It has some really great damage, amazing accuracy and stability, but most important it spawns these amazing looking skulls that deal a ton of damage on impact, they home onto the target and they seem to be doing a pretty good job at spawning fairly quickly, there's a ton of them coming up at times and they can quickly overwhelm the target. So one of the most fun guns in the new DLC that I've tested and it's also very powerful. At number 4, don't put aside the side missions, especially the one called Cold Case that rewards you some really nice pistol over there, a legendary pistol at the end of it. But uh, this is one of my favorite side missions since, yeah, it's a pretty good story over there, I'm not gonna spoil anything. But at the end of it, you're going to get something called the Seventh Sense Pistol, which again is absolutely insane. So this one has a very high damage, as you can see right here on the weapon card. Its, uh, it's effect is when reloading, it causes all spawn projectiles to hit the original target. So what this means is that if you're shooting a bunch of bullets, let's say, and they didn't hit the enemy if you reload your weapon while they're still traveling they will kind of aim back at the original target and yeah just deal damage like that so it kind of acts like a king's call except it's on demand once you reload it automatically starts going into the enemy now the only downside that i was able to find out was the fact that its bullets seem to be traveling very slow so it's good against targets like grave ward since it seems to be dealing a ton of damage especially on my Zane build but on anything else that kind of tends to move all over the place or is very agile it might suffer but again that can be kind of dealt with a little bit since if you can reload your weapon it's going to auto track the enemy with the same bullets and yeah some of the downside is actually compensated for anyway on a final note there's a couple of honorable mentions that I also want to bring up especially since um, some of these are easy to skip or you might be tempted to even sell some of these weapons on the list but first I'm gonna start things off with the love drill that you get after finishing the DLC main story it's just an exotic but trust me when I say this it's almost a legendary if not even better than most of the legendaries out there it's a pistol that deals a huge amount of damage and it comes with a very nice effect on it which pretty much makes you get bullets back as you hit crit points like headshots or uh, yeah like the cavity chest 
for Grave Ward. So this is an absolutely insane gun. I've tested this. As long as you can maintain those headshots or critical hit spots, you're going to deal a ton of damage and you will never have to reload your gun. A good test is, for example, against Grave Ward, which, uh, yeah, he's pretty stationary, especially when moving the platform. So he's there, you can shoot him in the chest, and it's not only just going to deal a tremendous amount of damage, but you're not going to have to reload your weapon, if at all. And this isn't even on like a most build or a flag build to fully take advantage of uh, yeah more more reload for the gun so definitely an awesome gun and it also works for regular enemies as well the other one that i'm gonna mention is the shocker this one drops from vault board in the negal nashai map he is going to be located exactly in this cave in the middle of the map and it kind of works like the lab a little bit it deals a ton of damage the difference is that the main orb can split into three smaller ones horizontally that can deal some really powerful damage but unfortunately it only spawns with shock elemental so that's kind of unfortunate i kind of wish that it uh, it dropped with other elementals as well but it's a pretty decent weapon it deals a ton of damage it's maybe not on par with the lab but uh, it deals a ton of damage it's one of the best weapons in the new dlc at least from my testing right now but yeah this is pretty much it with the new dlc this is how you can make the most out of it of course there's other methods and other guns that i could have covered but that's going to follow soon in other videos in the meantime if you enjoyed this video also don't forget to comment like and subscribe thank you so much for watching and peace